Go ahead. Like 
Mickey and Kyle Zeppelin and their team uh, to really do the hard work on the ground to, to go and, and meet with these businesses, find out what kind of a space do they want to be in, where are the, what are the, the right dimensions in the architecture, and, and then make it make it real. That's probably the, the one part I miss the most about being, whether I was in the mayor's office or the governor's office, we get to try and put the, the, the context in place. And, and, you know, government's not going to uh, solve everyone's problems, but it can really create the environment and the context by which people help, or help to solve their own problems. Uh, Abraham Lincoln said that, give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I'll spend the first four sharpening an axe. Uh, now, first, I'm not sure why it should take six, six hours to cut down a tree. Four, four hours is going to be a remarkable axe that takes four hours to sharpen. But I think his point was that you need to, if you want to create a context, you want to really help people, you know, give them the tools, the axe to, to cut their own trees down, create their own new careers, uh, you need a certain amount of planning. And that's where the, I'll hold up a means of visual. That's what this, this is our draft of, uh, Colorado Blueprint, uh, we call it Dance in Colorado. And in it are basically the results of uh, six months or five months of hard work going out and listening to people in every county. We talked to over 10,000 people. We had over 5,000 people in meetings. We've had over 8,000 comments uh, through the through email and the internet of, you know, what do people see as the real challenges? What are the real opportunities? You know, how are we going to get the state going uh, and really get it back into gear? And, we thought, I, I think we're the, you know, I just came back from the National Governors Association, we're the only uh, state in the country that is approaching it in this inclusive, kind of grass top fashion, really about going out there and trying to get the, the people that are, are working and have got both feet on the ground, what are their ideas and where do they see the opportunities for government to help? Uh, we broke this down into basically six focus areas uh, in the Colorado Blueprint. One is to on a statewide basis, create a business-friendly environment. One is to recruit, grow, and retain businesses. Another is to make sure we have access to capital. Uh, fourth is to create and market a stronger Colorado brand that we really put forward what, it, what the word Colorado means, that it is a place where we are business-friendly, but at the same time hold ourselves to very high standards in terms of protecting our landscapes and the natural beauty that attracted so many people here. Uh, fifth was to educate and train the, work, the workforce of the future. And that's a crucial one, as this, as, as this recession has really uh, severed so many jobs, many of those jobs aren't going to come back. We have to make sure we provide the training and the education so that people can be ready for the jobs that do come back, because they're coming. Uh, we met with the Microsoft yesterday. They've got their national conference here in Denver, and they've got 36,000 jobs that they're trying to hire people for uh, all across the country. And there's an issue about finding enough that are trained and ready for those jobs. And then last is cultivate innovation and technology, and that's why we're here, to make sure this sense of, this combination of innovation, which is what, you know, Zeppelin's a hard word to spell, but one way, just don't think about Zeppelin, just think innovation. Mm -hmm. That brand is, is, is very clear. Uh, uh, taking innovation and then using it as a context for uh, technology just makes sense. The fact that in this recession they could open this building, have you know 15 new businesses with one of 100 employees, uh, and, and be basically sold out the day they open. That says something, right? We should be paying attention to that. Uh, I want to, before I introduce Wayne Romero here, I want to also recognize we have a couple senators here, Pat Stedman, uh, Michael Hancock's here, uh, 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 also several of our cabinet members, uh, Kristen Michael. Uh, runs uh, our Secretary of Technology, runs our Office of uh, Information Technology, Jim Davison, Public Safety, Ken Lund, who's our Chief Counsel, uh, Eric Brown, Director of Communication, Roxanne White, Chief of Staff, Kevin Patterson, our Deputy, there are probably some other people here I've probably missed. Uh, oh, also, I should, uh, Rick Garcia is here. I want to make, make sure I mention him. I had lunch, I was lucky enough to have lunch with the Secretary of HUD last week, Sean Bonham. Uh, we had a long lunch together, and he was Effusive. Uh, he's not an effusive person, but very complimentary all the work that Rick's been doing and making sure that, that HUD is able to implement their programs here. Um, but is anybody that I Michael Johnson. I'll say Michael Johnson again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say Pat Stephan again. Michael Johnson and Pat Stephan again. Uh, can't, can't recognize 
centers too frequently. <laughs> um, so now let me introduce uh, Dwayne Romero, who really, uh, in running our Office of Economic Development, did such a wonderful job of imagine taking this amount of information from so many people and really meeting it, instilling it, really, uh, to the point where it becomes a blueprint of what we all need to do. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks to the whole crew. In fact, I see a great many state partners that helped to organize and execute on this. This actually, this uh, this blueprint, from our view, is is not the culmination or the end goal of a, of a process and a deliverable. It's frankly the start. It's the start, but it, it's hinged on literally six months of community outreach and active listening, and frankly, a bit of respectful dialogue with every community and every county across the state. This thing was, as, as the governor spoke to, this grassroots or grass tops re-outreach is a healthy recognition. It's a healthy recognition that, but frankly, state leadership, we don't own all the solutions. And in fact, the local communities and local economies, frankly, do have a lot of the definition and a lot of the detail, and they own their own initiatives. We have a system, a very important role, to understand those initiatives at a, at a local level and to be able to deploy resources in an effective and a very direct way so that we become more active and frankly more successful partners. And all the while we do that, we're hopeful that we elevate the level of trust and confidence between state leadership and local leadership. At the end of the day, we will pull ourselves through this recovery regardless of what's occurring at the national level. The state of Colorado, the state of Colorado is one of the end goals of this particular plan will be known as how it bootstrapped its way to its own recovery. It pulled itself through. And you know, this, this particular construct now has all 64 county voices. Every county participated and produced a summary that was input. Then each of the counties participated in a collaborative, a collaborative, uh, a collaborative form, thank you, uh, to produce 14 regional statements that now ultimately inform and shape our statewide set of initiatives. So what we're most proud of, frankly, is that the, 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 the authorship and the voice from these local economies and these local communities is articulated. And as the governor, he's already identified the six, I will want to underscore you too. Without a doubt, the overarching message that we heard from the global community is that excessive red tape and this lack of empathy and lack of urgency from state government. So this, in a certain way, attempts to sharpen and refine our own game so that we're more effective and more responsive partners. And then secondly, it's worth underscoring, Without a doubt, we heard across every community and every region, access to capital, access to capital. So this plan attempts to articulate not only several tools and techniques on freeing up equity, but it also focuses on debt lending opportunities and some specific tools and programs that you'll find in the, uh, in the plan itself. So with that, and a little bit of an underscore there, I'll, I'll wrap up my comments, open up for a little bit of Q&A, Perhaps uh, we have we have some time available here, and then we'll uh, we're going to roll up the we're going to roll up the road to uh, to Windsor and also to Fort Morgan to connect with those community partners and make sure we uh, we launch it right. So again, thanks for everyone, including the, the partner t partnership team here. Thanks to everyone for being here, and I'll open it up to Q and A. Yes, sir. Uh, in reviewing some of the regional plans and the county plans, they have some very finite, specific numbers about goals and targets. There's not that level of specificity in the state plan as far as this is our target uh, percentage and we'd like to cut job loss or unemployment. Can you tell us why there's not that specificity? The question was for everyone, at, at, down at the county and regional level, there were some specific numbers articulated down at those local economies and those local communities. And that is absolutely a fair comment. We wanted to ensure, though, that the, the six focal points that we now kind of landed upon have the broadest reach and the broadest kind of connection and have the greatest ability to kind of advance uh, and, and accelerate recovery down at the local level. 